I have shot somebody, I have actually stabbed people. Nobody ever died, but I was in the middle of everything. I was generally on drugs, and generally the higher end drugs and or drinking. In other words, you don't seem to care, you know what I mean? It contributes to, you, you're not inhibited. What would stop you when you're not drinking? You know, maybe your Catholic upbringing, maybe your parents' voice, but when you're not, when you're drinking or when you're on drugs, all that stuff goes away, you know what I'm saying? So I think it contributes to the violence. People made fun of me, and my brother used to beat me up all the time. I had a lot of sibling abuse, you know, so I had to deal with him. Uh, he would throw me off rooftops, choke me by the neck with a rope. Uh, even had one time had his friends beat me up, you know. It was just a terrible thing. So I, I stood by myself, and one day, I was like maybe nine, eight or nine years old, my neighbor next door was a young girl, and she was playing dolls, and she invited me over to play dolls. And me, like, I didn't know anything, I wasn't aware. I went over and played with her, I didn't think twice about it. You know what I'm saying? Um, it was just my sensitivity to being imaginative. Well, a couple of the homies, young guys, but they were there, they walked by, they saw me. Man, I went to hell because of that. You know, I didn't know what homosexuality was. I didn't know uh, all, those, all these words that people would use. You know, I didn't know what it meant, you know. Uh, but they would call me all those things. I was getting bullied, you know what I mean? I was getting tired of getting bullied. What happened when I was nine years old, um, those guys jumped me, and they just used an excuse to jump me, and what they did is they broke my, my jaw. And uh, I remember how I was beaten, I was on the ground, people were laughing at me, you know what I mean? And I remember I had a Little League game that day, and I went to the Little League, and I cried, I couldn't stop crying. I had never really been that way. And I made a promise to myself that I would never let that happen to me again. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I never have. I never, I would stand up to everybody after that. I don't care if they could beat me up. I would never be crying, beaten down on the ground. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I joined a gang about two years later. Uh, it, when I was 10, my best friend was killed. That also impacted me. Mm -hmm. And then by 11, I was ready to be in a gang. I was like, you know, uh, at least I felt the gang had power. If anybody was gonna mess with me, I had my homies, you know what I mean? And I, I, I was tired of the bullying. I was tired of being put down. Now in the gang, I could be tough now. And that's a sad thing. It's a distortion of manhood because then I wouldn't cry. And I wouldn't, you know what I mean, then I wouldn't be putting down and I would be going to war all the time. It was a distortion of manhood. I, I remember even my mom was trying to hit me and I wouldn't cry after that. And she would hit me with the, you know how they use the gancho, the cinto, the, <laughs> the chancla, the tabla, everything. She used everything against me and it didn't work. I wouldn't cry. So she stopped beating me up, but she gave up on me. Mm -hmm. But you know what I'm saying? It's just distortion of manhood. I couldn't show no tears. I had no more imagination. I wasn't playing no more. I wasn't going to hang with anybody. Now I was going to be in the street. You know what I mean? I wasn't going to be playing with a little girl, uh, you know, who innocently invited me over. That those days were over, and it distorted my manhood pretty much. Uh, well, you said that the gang gave you. Uh yeah, it gave you power, but what else did it give you? Did it give you anything else? It gave me what I thought was respect, mm -hmm. because now people looked up to me. Mm -hmm. Having been in the Vario gang, what it was is like, oh, nobody's gonna mess with you. Um, and it got to a point, it was a weird thing that happened. My brother was three years older than me. He used to beat me up when I was young, but he never got in the gang. He became like a regular dude. He was into sports, he used to play music, he played bass, he's a nice guy. Um, and one day he walked to a rival neighborhood and they jumped him because they knew who he was. In fact, we had cousins in that neighborhood that jumped him, our own cousins. And so my brother came home all beaten up. And, but now I was in the gang. He came to me, you know, for help. Can you imagine my brother, my older brother coming to me? But now I was the guy. And I remember going in that neighborhood in a small little low rider car. I don't, it wasn't a small car, but it was low, you know, and, I, and all the guys ran off. I had a gun with me, you know what I mean? I scared all the guys. They were hiding behind bushes. They were hiding behind couches. Luis, you know, well, I wasn't Luis, then my, my gang name was different, but they used to call me Chin because of my jaw. So Chin from, from, the, from, from Lomas is coming in. You know what I mean? Now, now yeah, that's what changed. I had more respect, you know what I'm saying? People were scared of me. So this is the other side of it, because one is I, what I tell gang kids what they need to do, but it doesn't mean the world accepts that. The other side is how do I, I get the community, how do I get our society to work with young men, to not write them off, to work with them with, through their trouble. That's what we don't have, but we need that, because a lot of young men will 
where all the trouble, they almost need to be in trouble just to see who they are, you know what I'm saying? But we don't have a community that can see that, that can accept it, that can bring out the good part of it and get uh, rid of whatever isn't good. And we don't have that, so we don't have mentors, we don't have proper guidance, you know what I'm saying? The teachings ain't right, they're not deep enough. So I'm trying to also work with my society. I'm working with these guys and, and some of the women, and then I'm also working with society. You gotta take, slow down, take time with them. Don't pressure them to be something that they're not. Don't pressure them to, okay, they want kids to be normal, but what's normal? Buying a house, having a job that you don't like, you know, uh, that's not normal either. You, what you want them to do is to be who they were meant to be. What is their passions? What are their interests? Uh, what, what are their skills? What are their attributes? You know what I'm saying? Work with them so they can be fuller in their life. That, to me, is what we need a society for, what we need community for, and I'm fighting to get community to do that more with these young people.